Welcome to Electron Line. Here's an example where when we revolve an object like this or a shape like this about the x-axis, we're going to get a, an object for which we're trying to find the volume. But in this case, we're going to need to chop it up into two separate pieces. This is an example where sometimes you may need to chop it up in multiple pieces and find the volume caused or created by revolving each separate piece around the x-axis. So here we have this shape. We're going to revolve it around the x-axis. We end up with a shape that looks like this and a volume that looks like a truncated cone. So we're trying to find the volume of a truncated cone. What I recommend we do is we're going to break this up into two pieces, call this uh, area one and call this area two. When we revolve each separate area, we're going to end up with two separate volumes. To find the total volume, we simply have to add the two volumes together, V1 plus V2. So let's work these separately, starting with V1 caused by area 1. When we rotate area 1 around, we get the outer portion of that truncated, truncated cone. V1 would be equal to area 1 times the distance covered by the centroid of that area. Now since this portion here is triangular in shape, the centroid can be found one-third the distance from the flat portion to the peak and one-third the distance from the flat portion to the peak in this direction, which means one-third the distance from there to there, that would be right about here somewhere, and one-third the distance from there to there, which would be about here somewhere. So the centroid would be right there. Let's call this centroid 1. And to find the coordinates of centroid 1, it would be one-third the distance from 10 to 4, since the difference here is 6. One-third the distance would be 2 units from there to there. That would be at a distance 8. And here we have 4 to 8. The, dis the difference here is 4. So one-third the distance from 4 to 8 would be 1 and a third. That would be 5 and one-third in the vertical direction and 8 away from this point in the horizontal direction. So that's the location of the centroid which means this distance here is 5.33. That can then be used in our first volume. This centroid is now going to rotate about the x-axis. The path that it takes is equal to 2 pi times the y-coordinate of the centroid. In other words, the area of this triangle will be the base times the height divided by 2, 1 half. The base, which is equal to 6, times the height, which is equal to 4, times 2 pi, times the distance from here to the centroid, which is 5.33. And now we can find out what the volume is attributed to this portion rotated or revolved around the x-axis. That would be 3 times 4, that's 12, times 2 is 24, 24 times pi times 5.33333 equals, and that gives us 402. Whatever the units are, that would be cubic units. If this is in centimeters, that would be cubic centimeters, and meters would be cubic meters. Now we want to find the volume of the second part. That's a little bit easier because it's a rectangle. That means it's much easier to find the centroid of the rectangle. Let me move this A2 over here. The centroid would be right about there at the halfway point between 4 and 10, that would be at 6. At the halfway point between 0 and 4, that would be at 2. Which means the distance to the centroid from the x-axis is equal to 2 units. So now we find the volume of the cylinder portion of the truncated, um, truncated cone, area 2 times 2 pi times the distance to the centroid. Let's call this y1 and y2. That way we don't confuse those, that they're not the same. The area of, the sec of the, this portion right here, that would be the width, which is 6, times the height, which is 4. That's 6 times 4, times 2 pi, times the distance to the centroid, which would be 2. 24 times 2 is 48, times 2, which is 96. 96 pi, the volume for that, 96 times pi equals 302. Again, that would be cubic centimeters or cubic meters or whatever the units are. Finally, the total volume, which is the sum of V1 plus V2, 
is equal to 402 plus 302, that's 704, the total volume in whatever units we're using here. You can see that if you have a, a surface which gets revolved around the x-axis, but the surface is shaped in such a way that you cannot find the centroid easily of the single surface, then you divide it into whatever sections you need to, you then find the volume separately, add the volumes together to get the total volume created from the surface that's then revolved around the x-axis. That's how we do that.